I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to present the, uh, the solution uh, testing for generic drugs, uh, present and future consideration. I'm very excited to be here today because um, I'd like to share our Division of Biopharmaceutics review approach, how we evaluate the solution method and acceptance criteria for the uh, generic drug products. Um, Mainly, my talk will be focusing on the drug product specific solution method development and how to set the acceptance criteria and uh, common deficiencies we identify in the submissions. If we could address those uh, deficiencies, common deficiencies uh, with, the, with these type of forums, that uh, the submissions will be complete uh, and we will have reduced IR cycles and we will have. Um, efficient reviews and effi uh, successful applications. So with that, I would like to give you an outline of my talk. I'll be talking about what is the current approaches uh, the applicants are taking for uh, testing the solution, testing for generic drug products, and moving to present and future consideration. As I mentioned, I will be talking product-specific solution method development and how to be set the dissolution specifications and common, common deficiencies identified in NDAs in the biopharmaceutic section of the application. And I will conclude my talk with the summary of what I presented. Currently, ANDA applicants uh, use either the available USP dissolution method, or if that is not available, they um, use the FDA database dissolution method. If these two approaches fail, and then they start developing their own method. However, moving forward, we recommend the applicants to think about um, product-specific dissolution methods, making their own methods for the for their own product, and set the specification based on the solution data. As the previous speakers mentioned, we in the Division of Biopharmaceutics also uh, see the importance of communication between the FDA and the applicants. As I mentioned, the more we communicate through teleconferences, interactive communications, or advice correspondence uh, through RBPM, as Dr. Gaines mentioned, that we will be able to address the issues in a timely manner. And hopefully, we will solve the issues within the first cycle, review cycle. Product-specific method development, what do I mean by that? There are three critical components for this. Evaluation of the method, discriminating ability of the method, and setting the acceptance criteria. And these three are integral to each other. For example, you may have the right discriminating ability, right method with the discriminating ability. However, if we don't set the specification at the right time point, we may lose the disability of the method. Evaluation of the method. In the dissolution uh, development method report, we would like to see as the Previous uh, uh, speakers also mentioned the solubility profile of the API in the physiological pH range. And uh, the report, the development report, should include um, data supporting the selection of the apparatus, or rotation and rotation speed. Or, and the applicants should investigate different in vitro dissolution media, for example, if they are using surfactants. Uh, the use of surfactants and amount and type of surfactants should be justified. And uh, whether the sink conditions are maintained or violated should be also clearly specified. This is the method development. Discriminating ability of the method, what do we mean by that? The method is discriminating if it is able to differentiate drug products Batch is manufactured under target conditions, which is to be marketed formulation. 
from those verses, the batch is manufactured with variations. That could be for genetic drugs or um, bioinequivalent drug products, for example. Acceptance criteria. For IR products, we set the acceptance criteria based on the overall data, bioequivalent batches and stability batches. Collection of complete dissolution profile data for 12 samples are needed. And selection of specification time point should be where 80% uh, of the drug is dissolved. However, when um, in cases, if the drug product, even though it's an IR product, if it's slowly dissolving, we may have more than one specification time point. And for that, we will have an early point and a later on, early 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then we will have another time point where 80% drug is dissolved. And here is an illustration um, of showing you the discriminating ability of the method and also how we set the acceptance criteria. In this graph, we are looking at drug dissolve versus time, and we have data on different batches. Um, clinical batches is the red, for example, and we have um, other batches. And here, the clinical batches, for example, the particle size is in the lower bound of the particle size specification. And one of the other batch is batches particle size is in the upper bound of the particle size specification. And here, as we see, the batch D, the purplish color, it's, um, I don't have a uh, pointer, but uh, as you can see, it's the different profile is the batch D, which for that, for example, that is out of the specification for particle size. So we have all uh, complete profiles for all batches. And we can see it complete profiles for uh, between lower bound and upper bound particle size range batches, the solution profiles are similar. And for batch D, which is out of the specification for particle size, the drug release profile are not similar and fail the F2 testing. So we could say this method is discriminating. Yes, that is correct. However, that's half of the story. If we don't set the specification at the correct time point, we lose the discriminating ability of the method. Here, the, point, um, the line crosses at the 80%. And if we lose, use the specification at 20 minutes, we lost the uh, discriminating ability of the method. And we have to tighten the spec. So this approach is based on the uh, quality control tool. The solution method now will serve as a quality control tool. But we don't know anything about the in vivo performance of the batch D, for example. And I will be later on illustrating that if we have more in vivo data than we set the spec, or when we make the in vitro dissolution method development, we may get, you may get more regulatory flexibility. But here, uh, it just serves as a quality control tool that we um, reject the batch with the uh, particle size, for example, out of the bounds, and uh, the solution is able to pick that up. Acceptance criteria for ER products, similar to uh, IR products, Acceptance criteria is based on overall BE and stability batches. Collection of complete dissolution profile data for 12 samples is needed. And for the specifications for ER products, we need at least three specification time points covering the initial, middle, and the final phases of the dissolution profile. The solution acceptance criteria for initial and middle time point should be based on the mean value plus and minus 10%. And the last time point should be um, Q kills 80 um, or 80% drug dissolved. And here, this is um, what I'm talking about when we set the specification based on the available BE uh, data. 
available DE data could be from the failed BE studies or the adequate acceptable BE studies. And we will use all the available physical chemical properties of the drug product, all the CMC information, in vitro dissolution, in vivo PK data, to, um, to um, show that the method is discriminatory and with the right spec, uh, discriminating ability will be uh, maintained. And here is this how I, um, this graph will illustrate that. It is the same data, drug dissolved versus time. We have the same batches. Now we have clinical data of the batch D, which is now is um, bioequivalent to the other batches. Now we set the specification to include this batch D. Now before, we had Q equals 80 at 15 percent, 15 minutes. But now, the acceptance criteria can be widened to, for example, Q equals 80, 30 minutes. I mean, we recognize that this is an ideal case. You may not have DE batches all the time, but what we are trying to convey that you should be able, if it, it is ideal if you could use all the BE data failed in development of failed or adequate BE data, uh, development of in vitro release method. We want to uh, common deficiencies in the A and D submissions. Um, the first one is not really a deficiency per se. When the new dissolution method is needed, as I mentioned, um, it needs to be approved by the FDA, our group. But once, uh, please, it should be noted that once the new dissolution method is approved, please petition the USB to add the new dissolution method to the USB monograph. Dissolution method validation data. We, uh, we often see that submissions does not include the method validation report, or the dates don't match, and or, and or method transfer report, and method validation is conducted at a different site. Our recommendation is include the validation of the discriminating ability, testing methodology, and analytical method used for assay of dissolution samples. Functional scoring. Often uh, we, see, we don't see the solution data to support the scoring of the tablets. And our recommendation is generally complete the solution profile data for the whole and split tablets using an optimal dissolution method. Incomplete stability dissolution data. Stability dissolution data are only provided for the proposed time point. If we do not agree with that time point, it is hard to uh, set the specification, look at the uh, uh, stability data. So we recommend that complete the dissolution profile at all time points, complete profile at all time points of the stability program should be included in the ANDA submission. SUPAC changes for IR or MR supplemental ANDAs. For example, dissolution data collected on age, age expired lots, and pre-change and post-change dissolution data are incomplete. Our recommendation is complete pre-change and post-change dissolution profiles should be included in the ANDAs. And for MR products, dissolution profile data should include more than three time points. The in vitro release data for semi-solid dosage, dosage forms, the in vitro release data is not included to support the post-approval changes for semi-solid products. So I, our recommendation is the IVRT method development report with complete information data supporting the selection of the components of the method and its validation should be submitted. I hope that I was able to convey you our um, message. Basically, the dissolution method is product specific. Setting the dissolution specification should be based on the data of the proposed drug product. And we are open to interactive communications between the applicants and the FDA. 
And ANDA submissions should include the complete data in order to optimize our review efficiency and approvals and decrease the number of information request deficiencies. Before, and I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues in the Division of Biopharmaceutics for their input in preparing of this talk. Thank you.